Hey guys, it's May May, and this is where we left off. I left this paper pad here on top of our mini album. I'm going to sit that down. Now, if you're just now coming to this mini album, I want to encourage you to look below. There are two other videos before this one, so I will have them linked in the description bar. But here's where we are. Remember we had a problem with this insert piece coming out so easy? Well, I'm testing it with you on camera. I have not looked at it. So, oh no, that is much better that is stuck down really really good let me show you that e6000 really did the job you see me flicking it that's really down there good now let's check these sides the hot glue seems to work really good on the laminate because it kind of melts to it so that all seems to be good looks like we're in good shape i'm also excited because i have started to design the pages and i want to kind of take you guys on a quick journey of page designing and how I do it because I know sometimes this can be really overwhelming because now we're to the point where it's time to start doing pockets and fun little things that we want to do because see our book is all established at this point but it's pretty plain right so here's what I do first thing I do is I count my pages I've got one two three four pages with this fold on it those are going to be my main pages then I have these two pieces that I'm just going to treat kind of like um Almost like how pages have those flap, how books have those flaps in them to keep things clean. I will put something on them, maybe. I don't know. I just really love the look of these. And then I have the inside and the the inside front and inside back covers that I need to address. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I'm gonna move this guy out of the way for now. And I'm gonna bring over a couple of things. First, I want to talk to you about the inside covers. Do you see how messy this is? <laughs> this is literally what I do. I sit down, I take a piece of paper. And I added some light to make that better. I take a piece of paper and I sketch out a very rough ske sketch of the space I'm looking at. At this point, I'm not even doing measurements. This is something I can take to my computer and flip through pictures on Pinterest or look at other, what other people are doing to be inspired and go, oh, I like the way they did that or how someone did this or I've done this in the past. I want to use it here. So I want to show you, and I'm going to use a pencil to point so I'm not like finger pointing. This is the actual inside cover in my book that we covered in this paper so you remember what it looked like. What I'm going to do here is take a piece of paper and use my flower punch board to make a fold over insert with a couple of buttons. I'm so excited. We went to the auction Saturday night and I got a sewing kit from I don't even know when. I bought it for $10. I'm going to do a video and show y'all what I got. You're not going to believe it. But I got a gallon size Ziploc bag full of buttons of all kinds. I'm so excited and I want to put them in this book everywhere. So there'll be buttons here. Then in the back side, I'm going to do, this is the same paper that's already in there. I'm going to mat it using a piece of paper that I'm going to fold in such a way that it creates a pocket because I'm going to cut it with the flower punch board. And then this is going to be a three envelope mini album that I'm going to stick in that pocket. So once I get this done, those two pages, you know, will be ready to embellish and put pictures on. So that's my inside and outside cover. So you see how you do that? You just kind of sketch. Now let's look at the big picture. Now these are pages one, two, three, and notice that four is blank. We're gonna do four together, okay? But first, I'm gonna show you what I've done. I went through on page one, and notice that I drew this out flat, and then this edge has a curve to it, and then I did a dash line. That dash line is because that's where my fold is. Let me bring the book over. So page one diagram is here, and it is this piece of paper that I'm looking at, okay? I'm going to mat this inside with a piece of paper, create a pocket here, and then build tags to go inside that pocket. I think that'll be really pretty right there. On the inside of this flap, I'm gonna do what I'm calling a ladder page. I think people call them waterfalls, but this is not one that you pull, so I'm not sure if you still call that a, water, a waterfall, but I'm gonna call it a ladder page. So I'll have that going right here. And then on the front, I'm gonna mat a piece that goes over my flap. So when you pick it up, you're actually picking up that matted piece. Okay, so I have created these notes for every page except the last one. Here on the page two, I'm actually going to come back and do that binding system one more time. I think that'll be neat. And then up here, I'm going to do something fun. This is kind of a matchbox kind of thing. It's hard to see here, but when I show you how to make it, it'll make sense. And then we're going to do four together. But I'm not going to do four yet because I don't know what I want to do there. And I thought, as I start to play with this and look at the papers more, I may come up with an idea. So I'm going to save that for as I go. But I know I've only got one page left to decorate or to design to know what I'm going to do. 
Do I want to do this one? I think I can do this one and this one faster. So let's do those and then we'll do a separate video starting those pages. So in here what I want to do is I want to measure how big I want this piece on the inside. Now, one thing... I love this paper, so I want to show a good bit of it. And I know this is a 7 inch wide piece, so I think I'm going to do a 6 inch by 8, no, a 6 inch by 7 and 3 quarter. Let me write that down. I'm still using my same little notepad. 6 inches by 7 and 3 fourths. That's what I want to do for this little book piece I'm going to put in here. So let's get a piece of paper and go in and do that. Now, I realize that some of this is not going to make a lot of sense until I've done it. So, you're going to have to just kind of watch me a little bit to get used to what I'm actually doing. Okay. So, this needs to be 6 inches wide after it's folded. And it needs to be 7 and 3 quarters inches tall, just period. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut it down to 7 and 3 fourths because I know that's my height. All this will make sense when you see it and it will help you when you're designing your own. So what I need to decide, probably just by scoring at this point, because this is 11 inches long. I'm taking 6 out of that, leaving me 5 inches. So my flaps are going to be 2 and a half inch flaps. So let's see how that works. I told you I was going to use my flower punch on this. And I know that this is not going to line up perfectly in the middle, and I'm okay if there's a gap. But I'm going to measure from my score line out to 2 and a half inches. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to split between the extra large and the large. So I'm going to go right between them, just eyeballing the first one. Punch. And then score. I'm using my own score scoring tool. I haven't even used theirs at this point. I'm going to score down as long as I can, and then when I flip it over, it'll tell me where to stick that back in there. Punch again. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Going between large and extra large. Punch and score as far down as I can on the board because that'll help me line it up when I put it back in. And then punch. Okay, so let's see what we end up with here. Now this should have ended up at 6 inches, and it did, and that's what I wanted. If you want these pieces to touch, you'll want to make, you might want to use a 12 inch piece of paper, which still won't touch, touch, but you want to do that or either make your inside smaller. I don't care if they don't touch. I just want something that I can put, focus, um, focus, that's a new word, so I can showcase those buttons here. I'm also going to, while I have my punch board out, round these edges. And the way I do that is I, Lay this edge right to the edge of that score line and punch. Right to the edge of the score line. Not overlapping it because you'll get that funny crook. And right to the edge. And you can use either side as long as you line up to the edge of the score line and not overlap. You also don't have to use this to round. You can use a punch or you can use whatever you've already got to, to round with. All right, so let's press this in place. Now, once I finish this, I'm going to put those buttons here and do that wrap. But I also will have these panels on the inside that I can do journaling. Wouldn't that be cute for journaling? And maybe a big photo or something there. So let me show you where that's going. This is going to sit right inside here, okay? Again, I want to remind you, you can change these measurements to be whatever you want. I just like this. It kind of will remind me when it's finished, I think it'll feel like a corset. I think that'll look kind of cool because we're doing this kind of stuff. Anyway, all right, now I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to use my sticky tape on this one. This is really sticky. This is some that I got from Punch Place Plus that Jamie sent me. And I like it. She sells this on her website, which is punchplaceplus.com. I'm really glad you guys are enjoying this little... I guess this is becoming a series, isn't it? But I'm getting a lot of good comments and a lot of good ideas, and I appreciate it. If you guys have ideas for what we're going to be doing, stick it in the comments below. 
if you want to see me try something, mention it. Because I'm always looking for new ways to do things. Or new ideas. Okay. So let's put this in place. And it's going to be centered half an inch gap all the way around. And so now I have these flaps in there. And I'm sure I will map that and do some good stuff with it. So there's that side, which remember, I designed this on my paper. Let's bring this back over. You see how I did the door? I had them touching, but since this doesn't touch, it doesn't bother me. Then I'm going to put the two buttons in the same, like I'd already planned. Now let's go to the back page. I should say the back inside cover. This one I want to do a pocket, and I want to show you my idea for this. Let me find my ruler again. I'm going to do the punch board again, using the flower punch board to make this fast. I know this is eight and three quarters. I'm going to do this at seven and three quarters, just like I did the front page. So I'm going to do seven and three quarters tall by six inches wide, just like I did over there. But I'm going to leave a flap to turn up and turn into a pocket. So let's do that real quick. So I'm going to take this piece of paper and cut it down to six inches, because that's how wide I want this pocket flap to be, or this pocket page to be. Six inches wide, okay? Okay, so this is my six inch tall piece. Actually, it's going to go like this. It's going to be six inches wide in the back. This flap is going to fold up, but I need this piece to be seven and three quarters tall when I finish. So that means from this 11 inch piece of paper, I need to come in three and one quarter inch. Okay, so I'm going to take my flower punch board, and I'm going to measure. Put, I'm going to put this line on three and a quarter, and it goes to the edge. So that's awesome. So I know that I can just take this piece of paper and line it up to the edge of my flower punch. Punch there. Oop, I didn't score. Score it. Flip it over. And punch again. Okay. So now when I fold this up, see I've made a pocket page. Isn't that neat? I just think that thing is awesome for pages. I just think it makes fast pages. All right, so still using my flower punch board, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to punch these edges so that they'll be rounded just like the other ones on the other side with that same round piece. Okay. Now I'm not going to round the ones on this pocket flap because I want to be able to use that for glue. And now I want to wet glue this shut. Because I'm going to be putting things inside of this, I want to use a wet glue so I know it holds well and it dries 100% so that my tags don't get stuck when I'm sliding them in and out. And now I can put my sticky tape on the back. Bring the book back over. And this time we're doing the inside flap or the inside cover. So this one is going to go here. Ooh, almost stuck it down too quick. Half an inch in all the way around. Just like so. So a pocket. So I have a pocket on this side. And then I have a flat page on this side. And I just did that with the flower punch board. So for today, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop this video here. And I'm going to try to get this uploaded for you guys today, which is Sunday. And then tomorrow, I'm going to come back in. And we're going to start making the elements for inside these pages. I'm really excited to get started here. The other thing I want to remind you of with this book, when you're planning out your um, design elements, remember you have half an inch between each of your pages here. You have a large, I don't know if that's going to show very well, you have a large gap between these pages. So don't be afraid to make little mini books and put in here too because they're going to fit because those have such a large gap between them. All right, so yes to the E6000 for the binder. Yes to your flower punch board for making flaps and pockets just like I showed you, like this one, and um, tomorrow we start on the pages. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoy, are enjoying this. Let me know in the comments if there's something you think I should try in one of the pages or try to add, and I'll see what I can do. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.